G'day and welcome all to week 11. Today is Monday the 18th of March. Make sure that's right. Yeah, March. And this week we're going to do something a bit different. So normally I will take you through some articles that I find from this week in 4 and 6, which is put together by the awesome Fillmore and really appreciate his work in continuing to update that website with just a central spot for all information that is cybersecurity. But what I saw over the weekend was a Medium article about getting into cybersecurity without a degree. And since these weekly ones are meant to be talking about entry into cybersecurity or the initial steps that you get into it, I kind of wanted to have a look at now the both the job market and also at a few of those articles. So for those that are watching, I have got all these tabs up that I'm going to go through. For those that are listening to the podcast, this episode might be really useful to go and watch if you want to go through it, but I am going to talk through what I'm looking at as well. And I will post all of these links as always in the show notes if you want to go have a look at them. So let's start with the Medium articles because this is kind of like where I saw the story first and then started looking at it. And I just searched for cybersecurity degree and then picked out a few articles and found the one that I had read on the weekend as well. And these are all really short, or well, other than one, these are really short posts. This first one uh, is done by, I think this is the author, My Mind. So information security analyst, this role involves planning and implementing measures to protect systems against threats. The average annual salary for this role is 100,000. Now, 100,000, I'm assuming that's US, uh, rather than be this being Australian specific. And underneath, uh, so that was, that was a quote from some other post. And then this person, my mind had wrote, I was once very passionate about doing cybersecurity degree, but if I had known this about this pay, then it can really boost my then passion to particle. And I think they meant participate. So I think what they're saying is that they were considering doing a degree, but if they knew how high the salary was, uh, they would have pursued it more. Uh, and then someone had commented on it. Cybersecurity is a large growing field that has empty seats. Now, I 100% agree with this. The salaries are quite good within cybersecurity. We do have a lot of free seats, and I've spoken before about those free seats, I think sit in the medium, the junior to medium range up to senior and that we have a bottleneck within the entry level at the moment because there's a lot of people trying to get into the industry and it takes quite a lot of resources to train people up. So there's the bottleneck there that will fill those seats eventually. There's still space uh, to get in, but the like all attractive industries, it will get saturated at some point. So, and if, if money is a motivator, then that's 100% all right. I think that'll help you get over the threshold to get into cybersecurity, what you will then need is passion to keep wanting to do this as a career because it does, it is a grind and it is hard and it, you have to learn a lot. So uh, be comfortable in the fact that if money is a motivator for you, completely fine. But you will need to develop the passion for the industry if you want to stay in it. The next one was a bit longer. So this is, oh, this might be like a member only story because I, I have a subscription to Medium. Um, so let me know if you can't get this one and I um, may be able to share it some other way. So beyond hacking, unmasking the reality of a cybersecurity degree. This just goes through the difference between Hollywood and what cybersecurity actually is from the perspective of hacking or pen testing. What I do like about this one, and it, let's see if I can find that quote that I really liked. Um, yeah. So if you're thinking of diving into this field with the dreams of becoming a hacker, pause for a moment. Sure, you'll learn hacking, but remember the math. Unless you're diving deep into cryptography or such niches, you might not use much of it post-graduation. Now, what I'm taking away from this, coming from the perspective of talking about cybersecurity degrees, is that you can go to uni, you can learn how to hack, how to use Nmap, how to use Metasploit, all that kind of thing. But after you get that in, past that initial hurdle, which you could learn for free online, then you need to understand if you want to be a really good hacker, you're going to have to understand cryptography. You're highly unlikely to learn that in any cybersecurity degree that is out there today. Where you will learn cryptography is in something like 
pure mathematics or applied mathematics or or some there will probably be a cryptography subject at your university in mathematics now you're only going to be doing that cryptography subject unless you pick it as an elective which i think most people's electives are quite strict within cybersecurity degrees or they have like fluffy cybersecurity subjects as electives uh, but you won't really get that cryptography subject unless you do something like computer science or uh, mathematics as well so and to state once again you don't need a degree to get into cybersecurity you can learn a lot of it free online and if you're thinking about doing degree because degrees can open a lot of doors in terms of jobs then maybe look at doing a degree that is more broader and has wider reaching benefits. So if you spend a lot of time in cybersecurity, you end up working with risk. So maybe a business degree would be really useful. If you want to be super technical, then computer science is always a good degree and it's usually recommended. Um, if you want to do architecture, then there might be like a computer networking course that you could go do. That will have cybersecurity elements to it, but the focus is on networking. So, or there's definitely certificates. So you could look at Cisco, for example. Um, and anything that I recommend is not do your own research. And I'm not recommending a particular company over another. And I'm not saying degrees are bad because I have a double degree. And I think the degree that I did taught me a lot of valuable skills, but I did an engineering degree and I'm not an engineer, and it didn't teach me how to be a mechatronics engineer, but it, had a, it did teach me how to critically think and work in a group. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one is, can you master cybersecurity without a degree? And it's a whole bunch of questions that this author poses. Uh, and then it says, there are still ways to get started. So one route to success is self-guided study. Online learning platforms like Udemy, Coursera, and Cybery provide various courses to teach you the fundamentals. 100% agree. There's low, there is free or low cost ways to get into the cybersecurity industry. I've said this before in other interviews and podcasts. If you want to learn cybersecurity fundamentals, then the CompTIA Sec Plus course is really valuable. It is US focused, but you can just go learn all that for free through Professor Messer on YouTube. Now, if you're the kind of person that needs a certification in order to study, then that might be hard, like you're going to have to spend money to pay for that certification to then do it. But you could also just try and pay for the cert and study all for free. If you need more guided study, then again. But when you get into cybersecurity and you have to solve a problem, there isn't going to be a course you can do to solve that problem. You're going to work collaboratively with your peers and go and do a whole bunch of research yourself to then do it. Now. In, uh, and I completely get this, in some people's minds maybe work and then trying to do a course is completely separate in their minds because if they're doing it for work, then they have the motivation to do it. Uh, and most people, will, like I was, trying to study quite a lot outside of work. That is difficult and, and each person has to figure out individually how they learn, how they study, how they grow that way. What, again, I'm trying to get across is that there's no one path into cybersecurity. There is multiple paths. You need to figure out what that is. Don't get sucked into the hype, the advertising, the marketing around cybersecurity degrees and cybersecurity boot, boot camps because there is literally so much information out there for free. All right, with that, what I then wanted to do was, uh, what were these ones? Sorry, I'm just looking at, oh, these were just more articles that I was looking at. Um, so California State University, They've got a article on how to break into the cybersecurity industry without a degree. Uh, let's see, hard skills important, upskilling. So they're offering a certificate program. Yeah, and it looks good. It, it provides some free resources. It provides some some of the same points that I made. So CompTIA Network Plus and Security Plus is on here. Um, and th like I guess it goes to say the same with a degree or a boot camp or anything, any any other kind of program. Unless you're doing a program with a company that has a graduate program, you're not guaranteed a job at the end. So no matter what the university or whatever stats they have, that 90% of our students come out with a job at the end. 
realistically, like, where are those stats coming from? What's their sample size? Are they excluding any results for those that don't get a degree or drop out halfway? Yeah, like, statistics can be manipulated, so don't always read into them what they're they're just using it for advertising and always think that they're trying to sell you something. Um, so I'll, I'll post this article up here. I think this is a good article. It talks about soft skills, hard skills, upskilling and everything else. Um, I think there's good information in here. Just as a caveat, again, I don't think you need to pay for anything to learn some of this stuff. Uh, there was also an article from Berkeley Extension. Uh, I will post this article up. It, it looks like it's saying the same thing. Um, uh, I Yeah, I'm like less happy about this write-up. It's got a section called alternatives to a degree and then it's got top three cybersecurity certifications and then it lists CEH, CISP and CompTIA Security Plus. Now, CEH is not a certification I would recommend doing. CISP, you could do the intro to that, but it's more once you've been in for a while, I would go and look at that if you need it, not just because I'm going to do more certifications. Once you're in, you don't need certifications as much unless you're really learning something off that. CompTIA Security Plus. Now, why I say that's really good is it collates the information for fundamentals in a really good way, and there's a lot to learn in there. The reason why it's such a highly rated certification is that a lot of government security jobs in the US require CompTIA Security Sec Plus if you're a government employee and you have something to do with cybersecurity. So the reason why you see so many people have it or there might be requirements on it for jobs if you're in the US is because of that reason, is it's just like a mandatory thing that you have to have. Now, this is when you're reading something and you're reading it critically, Think about from your perspective, if you're in APJ, Australia, New Zealand, are the requirements that you read a lot about in blogs relevant to you because a lot of them are written by Americans? And CompTIA Sec Plus is not a mandatory certification in government organisations in Australia at all. I don't think I've seen a requirement state that it needs Sec Plus in any other cybersecurity job either. And a lot of jobs where if it does say that it has requirements for certificates, I would question that. I would question in the fact that if it said it needed CISP, CEH or SEC+, plus, especially if it was an entry level job. Maybe if you were looking at like a junior or a senior and it said, hey, like we want you to have this. Or like if you were working, if you were looking at a job that a company was a full Microsoft shop, they ran everything in Azure and they said, hey, we need you to have some of the Azure certifications in security and um, architecture and network. Then sure, like if that's gonna be your full primary role and they want you to learn that stuff, then that's okay. Those do, those certifications, uh, I'm pretty sure the information's free to go through all of it and you're paying for the cert certificate at the end. Um, and they're very low cost, like I don't think they're that much. So yeah, this I'm not gonna post this article because I don't, I don't like that they've put the top three. It, to me, that just means that they haven't researched it, or they're taking they're taking statistics that are accurate for that people have these, but it's misguided. Um, so I'm going to close that one. All right. So the next thing that I wanted to look through is, and this is the last thing that I'll cover today. Uh, this video might be a little bit longer, so we're at 14 minutes already, and I, I apologize for the long episode this week, but. It was just on my mind. So the next one that I wanted to do was look through LinkedIn and I also jumped on Seek just to see how easy it was to try and find entry level associate jobs uh, within the cybersecurity field that you could apply to. And then what I wanted to do was look at the actual job description and take you guys through it and pick apart the required and the nice to haves uh, on the job. So I just searched cybersecurity, I set the location to Australia. Uh, my first search, I clicked internship, entry level and associate, 613 results. I've got some open that we're gonna look at, but I just wanna point out how bad the filter is for LinkedIn and a lot of the job search. And 
I think this might be a little bit on the employee employer side in that they're not entering the right fields to come up in these filters. And that's a problem. So kind of calling out both LinkedIn for maybe not filtering very well, but also the employers, like make sure your job going up has the right experience level for, for what it is. Now, I again, I don't know where the problem is, but I'm sure it's both, both parties' problems, but this makes it hard for job searches. So the first one is that comes up uh, today, because again, like I'm looking at this this morning, major account manager, federal government, the, uh, what am I looking at here? So this is like, to me, this isn't even cybersecurity. Like it might sit within the cybersecurity field. I'm just gonna, I didn't open this one before, but I was just like, so it's listed under Q, computer and network security for Palo Alto, major account manager. So sure, like I would probably put this under a different, oh, that's the company. My bad, my bad, that's not the job role. Um, but if I look at the your experience, minimum 10 years of successful experience in technology related sales and business development, like this isn't an entry level, this isn't an internship role. Like minimum 10 year, what is this doing in that search? Anyway, some of the other ones that came up are just like general security consultants, which I know are junior level ones and I haven't selected, well I've selected associate, maybe there's not a level for junior, but still, like they're not here. Another one, senior security operations lead, lead OS Australia. That is definitely not internship, entry level or associate. So I'll leave my rant about the filtering. I did find some jobs. So the first one I found was instant response analyst. Uh, this is listed as an associate role. Now, associate, I would say is June, like very junior with maybe some self-learning, maybe did some cybersecurity at their last job, but it wasn't their role and they learned from there and you could get them into this one. This company does IT services and IT consulting. And again, I'm not calling out any particular company. This is rampant across a lot of jobs that I looked at. Uh, so what have they got here? So they've got about the company, about the engagement. It's a contract role. So the responsibilities respond to major incidents by performing host-based forensics, investigate security appliances and application logs to identify attacker activities, remove attack attacker from your network, root cause analysis, provide evidence of vulnerability and resolution options to business stakeholders, scripting activities, writing ad hoc detection signatures, hunting, collection, and analysis. Now, all of those responsibilities sound uh, appropriate for an associate if they've got a senior that is looking after that associate and looking after the case. I would not expect an associate to do any of this by themselves. Uh, it would all be guided. So their requirements is a background in security threat detection and incident response. Probably would not put this in an associate level. Uh, threat detection and incident response. Threat detection maybe, if you'd worked in a SOC before. Um, incident response, very broad word there about what they're, what they're looking for. Um, are they looking for just experience responding to incident response cases? Are they looking for experience in managing the cases? Um, I would probably have worded that a little bit better. I would also like to point out here, a lot of jobs put, make sure your grammar and spelling is correct and they have not done that in their job here. That sentence is not capitalized, there's no full stop. Um, yeah, small pickup, but I've seen less, like I've seen companies reject people for less in their applications. So um, I would hope that they provide leniency on their side um, for this kind of thing. Strong understanding of cybersecurity principles, threat landscape and best practices. Again, for a requirement, requirements should be very specific, very clear on what you need to achieve to even be applying. That's very broad. Like from my experience, I would kind of know what to apply being an instant response role of what they're looking for, but too broad. Excellent problem solving skills and the ability to troubleshoot complex security issues. Again, uh, problem solving skills, sure. Um, 
I would list this not under requirements, but under like traits. Uh, troubleshoot complex security issues. Uh, I would provide an example or be more um, specific here. A lot of stuff you do in instant response isn't a complex security issue. It's actually misconfigurations that's resulted in a compromise. Strong scripting skills. What script language are they looking for? What do they mean? What is strong? Um, some scripting languages are much easier than others. What kind of task are you going to be performing in your scripting skills? Are you looking for automation? Are you looking for someone to write a Python script that will parse a complex data type? That in itself is a vastly different skill than writing something that would go out and collect evidence using PowerShell across different host base um, endpoints. Build script tools or methods that enhance threat detection and IR capabilities. This is not an associate skill. I would not list this as an associate skill at all. Demonstrated technical aptitude, WAF, IPS, anti-DOS, and SEAM. Yeah, like, where do I even start with this? Instant response analysts, like, this isn't going to be configuring these tools. It's not going to be setting them up. So do they want someone to look through it. So seam, sure, I've looked through a lot of seams. I've used a lot of different seams in my time. Uh, I've set basic ones up before. Um, I've used it as part of investigations to get data. Anti-DOS, never set one up, never use one. IPS, um, so this is an intrusion prevention system. Uh, I've never set one of those up either. Technical aptitude, like, do they want you just to look at the logs of the IPS? And those IPS logs should be pushed to the seam. So what do I need technical aptitude in an IPS for? Um, is it just reading the logs? I would Google that. Um, a WAF, like, again, from an instant response perspective, reading logs, like, but are they wanting someone, like, what does demonstrated technical aptitude mean? To me, for this role, would mean reading logs. But do they want someone to set up and configure this? That's not an incident responder's role to do this. That's a completely different skill set. And then ideally knowledge in big data storage, processing, and analytic. No SQL, ETL, BI, Hadoop, machine learning. Um, I mean, you guys are going to know what I'm going to say about this. Like, what is what is what kind of knowledge do they want? So overall, uh, this is not an associate role to start with. Um, from reading the requirements only, if there was a senior there and maybe their requirements are more um, flexible, and you're going to have a senior teach you all this stuff, they're just wanting someone with like basic knowledge to start or the the aptitude to learn. Great. If they're expecting someone to come in and do this, then this is not an associate role. Um, your descriptions, your grammar, your punctuation needs to be better. Uh, I will leave that alone for this one. Next one, Associate Consultant Cyber CX Academy Program. This Academy program is awesome. So I used to work for Cyber CX. Um, consult Consultancy is not for me. Uh, that's why I left. But they're like on the board up there for like some of the biggest like consultancies in Australia, one of the biggest consultancies in Australia. And um, they do a really good job at, at training industry people. And I think this is what a lot of big companies should be doing. Train, train people, get them on as entry level, get them on as associate. Some people will leave, some people will stay, but you're making the industry better. At the end of the day, we're here to make Australia safer. We're here to make the world safer in cybersecurity. This is awesome. Now, let's have a look through. So the academy is industry leading, entry level, great. Six month paid permanent, provides security awareness. So you get fundamental training for four weeks, tailored mentoring for 10. Now I left before this started, so I don't know the quality of this program. I just like that it exists. Um, so you got 10 weeks of tailored mentoring, 12 weeks of working on client projects to hone. Um, and I think it's across I don't know whether you get rotated between the different practices, but you might get to pick one maybe, um, or maybe you're applying. Uh, no, it doesn't look like you're applying for a specific one, or maybe you do. 
and then it's got two pathways so consulting pathway and technical pathway so cool they're splitting the consulting and technical good what the, what they're looking for so they're looking for people who want to learn and grow in a constantly evolving industry that's combining combating criminal activity we're more interested in who you are and where you want to take your career if you're new to this world we'll teach you everything you need to go awesome um, if you have qualifications in cybersecurity, network engineering, and computer science, you might be a great fit, as well as those from law, arts, commerce, with a keen interest in the field. Awesome. Love this. I love this so far. Why CyberCX? Given the freedom, flexibility, support, design, and sustainable, rewarding career. I mean, that's like the whole wording for normal consultancies, Ryan. So um, take that as you will. I still think this is a great program. So let's make this simple. Hit apply. So there is literally no, there is no technical requirements. There's no minimums on here. Um, I, I do think they say like who this is aimed at for. Um, yeah, up the top. So university and take graduated, school leavers, people seeing career change or looking to re-enter the workforce. Yeah, so super broad, right? Like, I love this. I love the way it's written. I love the way it's like targeting quite a broad audience. It is literally the entry level job that most company should write a thing for there's no requirements there's no qualifications they have hey it would be great if you're interested and you want your career in cybersecurity and you're willing to learn apply for this role like love this really really love this um 100 like i know there's other consultancies that do these kind of entry level things as well i'm on board with all of them whatever you think about consulting like take it as you're going to learn and you're the master of your own fate. You can choose to leave and go on to something else. This is great. Uh, cyber analyst engineer. So this one's listed as a uh, entry level job. I think it's an on prem role in Sydney. Uh, cyber analyst engineer. That title is a little bit confusing because cyber analyst is a job role, job in itself, and then I would say an engineer is a job role in itself. Uh, so you're working closely with stakeholders from both business and cybersecurity team. They'll have involvement in robust assortment of security projects. Okay, so you're like cyber specialists, but they're doing project work. Uh, so they've got a taster of what you can expect in the role. Participate in incident response, containment and remediation activities, designing, implementing, refining security use cases and detections, identifying opportunities for automation, developing dashboards with advanced visualization. Great. That's actually pretty good. Like. If you're unsure what any of these means, I would find yourself a mentor, reach out. That's very clear for anyone who's in the industry and can explain further to you. I would like to see maybe links out or more description here since this is an entry level role, but I guess they're relying on the fact that they're expecting you to kind of start building a network and asking these questions. Um, so what they're asking for is one year experience in hands-on security incident response role. Now, entry level for instant response i actually kind of like this like this is um yeah like you could you could get this from a lot of online training they might be flexible on that if you're working at a company and an instant response happens you could put your hand up and just experience instant response within your own company companies are always dealing with instant response cases or like alerts that are coming up so i would try and reach out internally wherever you are if you're a school leader, you're going to have to get the training here or, or have experience somewhere else. But for instant response, this is actually isn't too bad. One year experience is, I'm okay with this. Um, previous experience with SIEM endpoint detection. If you've got the one year, you will have this. Uh, SIEM, you can get from training if your company doesn't have a SIEM. Everyone's got EDR. Uh, unless you're working for like a really small company. Um, threat knowledge across multiple technology and systems. It just lists Linux and Windows. So there's some free courses you could look at uh, doing things like even hack the box, gamified learning, learn kind of like the threat knowledge of how you would attack a Windows and Linux system, where there's previous, like look at the MITRE attack framework, go from there. Experience with scripting languages, and it just says Python, Bash, PowerShell, KQL as an example. And it just says experience, I love this. Like you could write some automations in PowerShell. You can write some basic Python. This is great. Proficient in the use of the log analysis. Uh, that sentence doesn't make sense, but I know what they're trying to get at. 
I think they're just trying to say like be proficient in log analysis. My biggest tip for log analysis is learn how to use grep because I use that a lot to look through logs. Organizational time management, customer service and problem solving skills. This is listed on the qualifications, but they're all soft skills. They're very hard to like, unless you can observe it, they're very hard to um, quantify. Uh, I would, if you're applying for this job, I would just have examples of how you've demonstrated that in each of those things for the interview. Demonstrated flexibility, uh, initiative, judgment, and discretion. Again, soft skills, like have examples for them in the interview. I wouldn't list these as qualifications though. Willingness to learn new tools and processes and proven track record of learning new technologies, methodologies, and skills. Again, soft skills, that first part of the sentence, willingness to learn new tools, that's not a qualification. That's an internal, like an intrinsic motivation. So I, I would like to see jobs, people who are posting jobs, think more about how they're writing these down in that they're not qualifications. You want personal traits. You want like people's experience listed kind of thing. But it's not like, I can't go out and do a certification. I can't go out and um, like definitively prove a willingness to learn new tools. Um, yeah. Uh, then it lists the benefits, talks about that. Together we are creators. Okay, cool. Overall, I, I really like this job description. Um, I think it's entry level. I think it's fairly well written. They can do uh, a little bit better in some of the descriptions, particularly because they're listing qualifications and they could split them up a little bit better. It's hard to read some of this. They could have put a little bit more description in the here's a taster of what to expect in this role. But I mean, if we go back and talk about the Cyber, Cyber CX role, that one was very, um, very vague in what they were going to teach you. But they they listed that like here's your program. Like you're going to do two weeks or four weeks, and then ten weeks, and then twelve weeks. This is your program. And at the end of it, if you show aptitude, you'll probably be offered a job. This is giving. This is offering a job in itself. Um, so I think it can be a little bit better and a little more clearer um, in the job description itself. All right, I've talked for a long while for this short episode that I was meant to do. What am I at? I am at uh, 30, I'm at half an hour. Okay, so I apologize again for this. The last thing that I will take you through is I had more jobs on Seek, but I wanted to take through the filter that I was doing. Again, the filter's not great. So I looked up cybersecurity entry level. Um, I didn't even select region for this one, but it looks like it's filtered on my location anyway. Um, it's got an entry level one, level one IT support, Security consultant, cyber CX. Um, some of these aren't entry level, and I guess this is already it's listed senior security consultant. So it's still like it looks like it's um, hitting on cyber security more than it's hitting on entry level. So yeah. Just to recap, I talked about not needing degrees, not needing certifications. The reason why. There's so many boot camps and certifications out there these days is like I said, there's a bottleneck at the entry level of people trying to get in, which means it is highly competitive to get in. There is a de definite gap in the industry where we need more people. We need people at the junior, at the senior level to fill those technical roles, to fill the GRC roles, the pen testing, the instant response roles. The problem is it's the bottleneck. There's not enough companies and people to train the juniors coming in to then move up in the ladder within cybersecurity. So the reason why all these boot camps and degrees exist is because they're selling it as you've got a better chance of getting a job because you'll have a certificate, you'll have a degree. But I know from experience and from talking to my friends who are in recruiting, who are in, who are interviewing people for jobs, is that they still want to see the motivation, they still want to see the drive, but they don't really give a shit whether you've got a certification or a degree. If you've done more free technical training and you can prove that you're motivated and that you can learn new schools that way and you can articulate that in the interview, they're more impressed than if you've just gone and done a cybersecurity degree and you you come out and you're like, hey, I've done this degree. Um, it took me three years and I got it. And then they go, how do you use, like you're applying for an incident responder role and they're like all right well how do you use autopsy well unless that was part of your degree 
then you've probably never seen it before, but it's quite a common free tool that you could use. Now you would have come across that if you've done free training. And this is where I say like there's more, again, like I'm not fully bagging on degrees, like they are useful, but if you're gonna do a degree, if you're gonna go through the certificate pathway, if you're gonna go through self-learning, what you really need, no matter which pathway you choose, is a network. And if you can get one, a mentor, because they will help you. They will give you advice. They will tell you what tools to look at. They will help you prepare for interviews. You're gonna have to drive the hell out of the engagement with your mentor. But from the people that I've mentored, both of them have got jobs within 12 months. So I guess from personal experience, that's, that's where I'm coming from. But you have that pool of knowledge you can tap into and ask questions of and ask, is this certificate gonna be worth it for what I'm trying to do before you spend the money? Yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say this week. For those that have stuck around this long, I thank you for listening this whole time. Parts of it were definitely ranting. I didn't mean, like I'm in no way slagging on any particular company, pathway that you choose or anything. Just from my experience is be wary of the marketing and advertising and the draw and appeal of, hey, do these four certifications and you'll get a guaranteed job. 95% of our students get jobs after doing this because I know that some of that percentage will be people that dropped out and still got a job and then they're like, oh, we did that. And it's it's all statistics. It's all marketing and advertising. So um, always be wary, always be critically thinking, build trust and relationships, try and get a mentor. Um, I know it's a long road. It's definitely a lot harder to get in these days than it was 10 years ago. Um, if you'd put in a little bit of effort doing online learning to get a job back then versus now, it's a lot higher. The, the bar is a lot higher just because there is that bottleneck in the entry level. So I'll leave you all with it this week. We're under 40 minutes, but if you want any more content, please check out my website, hardlyadequate.com. I have a YouTube podcast. I'm also on the Forensic Focus podcast. There is ways that you can support through my website, but the best way is to like, comment, share, subscribe to my social media channels, and I will see you all next week. Bye.